The year is 2004. An entrepreneur and developer by the name of DHH creates a framework called Ruby on Rails. This went on to power some of the most important tech companies over the next decade. Now, this isn't a video essay, so I'm not going to make this extremely extensive, but some of the biggest names include GitHub, Airbnb, and Shopify. Simply put, the kinds of places where the early employees are now worth seven or eight figures. The framework itself prioritizes simplicity, productivity, and the philosophy that you don't always need to reinvent the wheel. Ultimately, it's a case of how can we just get it done? It's no coincidence that DHH himself is a very successful entrepreneur, because really the framework focuses on getting the commercial value add out of your software. Ruby on Rails is really cool and it inspired a generation of developers, the one just before mine. Over the following years, particularly after the rise of Node.js, it declined in popularity a little bit. As such, a the majority of former Ruby on Rails users now write JavaScript or TypeScript of some form. But I would argue there's never been a true Ruby on Rails replacement for JavaScript. Next.js and Remix go part of the way. They're both great frameworks and I've launched a large scale project using Next.js before and it worked great. However, I think with the launch of Wasp, we may just have found JavaScript's Ruby on Rails moment. And to prove how excited I am, and to prove this isn't just fluff, I've launched my most recent project on it. That's called Microinfluencer, and you'll hear more about that later. If you've seen any of my content before, you know my biggest priority is pragmatism. I'm a big believer that software engineering is not an art. And there's nothing wrong with that. Art is cool, art is great. But software engineering, it's just that. It's engineering, it's finding a solution to a problem. As somebody who lives in a city that has a lot of bridges around, I'm very grateful that engineers are not artists because I'd really rather there wasn't a creative flair in something that I'm driving over uh, when I'm 100 meters off the ground in my car and there is a very cold Scottish sea underneath. So whilst we're not building bridges, what we are doing is we're writing code to either make money or save money. It sounds like such a simple thing to say, but so many people don't think about coding in those terms. Wasp fully embraces that commercial mindset. Ultimately, that process of saving or creating revenue is supported by a few key processes. To name but a few, billing, email transactions, authorization, authentication, and a few other like dashboards and that kind of thing. Those core functions that I mentioned come out of the box with Wasp. It's got a ridiculously easy Stripe integration for billing. The email service is plug and play with whatever provider you want to use. You write cron jobs as code and the authentication and authorization is built in. Whilst Wasp itself is written in Haskell, the implementation is entirely in JavaScript, so you don't need to learn anything new. Whilst Wasp may technically be a language, it's much better to think of it as a framework. It's also fully open source, and the team really encourage you to dive into the code, make documentation changes, even make core code changes. There has been a lot of debate about boilerplates recently. People are charging a significant amount of money for them. Sometimes I do think they're worth it. I've used uh, Jonathan, uh, Jonathan Wilker's Super Starter Boilerplate, for example. That was great. I used it for startup grad jobs. Um, but Wasp actually provides you a boilerplate out of the box, which is incredible. I think firstly, that shows a commitment to how commercially driven the language is. And secondly, I think it's very clever marketing. So well done on the Wasp team for that. So I think it's about time that I show you that this isn't just a load of waffle. I want to show you how setting up a Wasp application actually works. Okay, let me show you how easy it is to get a Wasp app up and running. First, let's check that it's installed. It would help if I could type properly. And it would always help if I knew the command. There we go, 0.13.2. It's very slightly out of date, but it's okay for this uh, purpose. So let's create a new Wasp app. Wasp new, let's call it subscribe to Cameron. So here are the five options you get when it comes to configuring a Wasp app. One is basic, so that is essentially the bare bones Wasp experience. Two is a to-do app, uh, so you can see how the full cycle of a, a CRUD application would work. Three is a SaaS. This is my favorite one. This is based on Open SaaS, which is the free boilerplate that Wasp released. Uh, it's really cool. Uh, you have all kinds of information and uh, functionality that comes out of the box with it. So that's what we're going to do, um, and I'll show you more details of that in a minute. Then we've got embedding, uh, which is fantastic for anything AI related. And fifth, which is really cool, not going to try it in this video, but we might in another, is you can generate an application based on an AI spec, um, which I think is really cool. So uh, if I give it a prompt, then it will generate an app based off that prompt. I've experimented with this a bit and it comes out with some really fun stuff. Uh, so let's go with three, the SaaS option. Cool. So it's already uh, created it. Uh, so you get you get an app and a blog um, out of the box with it. So we're just going to work with the app for now, um, but just so I can show you. Yeah, so you get the app, the blog, and the test here. Let's go in the app. Okay, so what's DB star? 
This is the, the Postgres uh, database, although I think it actually uses SQLite under the hood when you're running locally. Um, or no, actually according to output is Postgres. So we just need to run the second command, wasdb migrate dev, uh, because we've changed the schema by creating it. Um, so we need to action that. So this process will be very short. Uh, what it's doing is it's just kind of uh, making sure that everything is in sync in the database. So uh, you should be able to see a bit of that in the output here. Um, it usually takes one to two minutes, but it might be even quicker than that now. As you can see here, uh, it's made a few small changes uh, to the to the tables in our database. Um, and that is it done. Uh, cool. So let's just jump back to the instructions uh, to, to get it started. So you can see we've done that. We've done that. Now we just need to run this. Uh, and what that does is that gets the environment variables uh, sorted and ready to go. There's two environment variable files in Wasp. You have the client and the server. And let's start. And that is already up and running. Cool. So we are already up and running in Wasp. How cool is that? So this is the landing page. It's dark mode here, um, but it always comes in light mode. I personally prefer the dark mode. Um, and this is all customizable, of course. Uh, this is one of the first things you'll probably get and end up changing just so you get a feel uh, for Wasp. Now, I did say this comes with a lot of stuff out of the box, so let's sign up. Obviously, this is dummy data. So to simulate the verification, you just click this link, uh, and that is verified on the other screen, I promise. Uh, <laughs> cool. So we're now into the application itself. You can see here uh, it comes with this AI-powered uh, to-do list and day scheduler. Uh, I don't have the open AI keys hooked up, so I can't open a full demo, but if I say, oh, the cat, bam, um, that comes in, and I say, record Wasp to tutorial. Uh, again, that's in there. I can do that. And this is all being updated in uh, the database as well. Uh, also as well, you can see file upload uh, using AWS S3 um, comes out of the box as well, which is extremely helpful. I've used that for storing logos, for instance. Um, and then as well, pricing. Uh, so this is great. This plugs and plays with Stripe. So you just need an API key and people will be able to sign up by a plan um, for a subscription. The other thing that's really cool is it comes with credits as well. So you can purchase uh, you can purchase a certain amount of credits. People are moving away from monthly subscriptions, particularly with AI apps, and moving it more to pay per use. So there's been a couple of people in the Wasp Discord actually who have worked on um, AI apps and they've had a lot of success using the credit model. So it's a really interesting um, kind of model. I haven't actually done it myself, uh, but I'm, I'm quite keen to try it out at some point. Okay, cool. So let's jump into the code base now. So that's us in the, the code base. So this main.wasp file is kind of the central command of a wasp project. So if we scroll through here, you can first off see the kind of metadata at the top. So if we change this to um, subscribe to Cameron, um, but you can also see the authentication here, which is handled. Um, you obviously would change all this information um, and you can see where it will redirect people to if either they fail to log in or they successfully log in. So here it would take you automatically to the AI app um, once you successfully log in. You can see here the database um, kind of set up and the functionality where you can see some users, which is really cool. So if you want to create some realistic test data, uh, it's capable of doing that. The email sender is really critical. Obviously, you can see there I was using dummy emails through the local host, but eventually you're going to want to use something proper. Uh, personally, I use the mail gun. I found it really easy uh, to get up and running. Wasp is fantastic, obviously. Um, all you do is you add the uh, you, you add the keys into this file here. And, you know, it took more time on the mail gun side than it did on the Wasp side. Uh, so, you know, you can configure where it comes, where the emails come from, which is great. So if you've, if you've used Prisma before, uh, this will be very familiar to you. This is where you create 
uh, your entities. So this allows you to create a type safe database um, essentially and this is where you can moderate you can obviously uh, change these as much as you want, modify them. Um, you have them here for the user, of course. Then as well, uh, we saw the AI demo app, so around like task, GPT response, the file upload, uh, all this kind of stuff. Um, that's where you can view all the entities. WASP does also come with the studio. Um, if you run WASP DB Studio, uh, it creates a little like um, kind of super base like experience um, for checking out the, um, the database in your browser, which is really handy. The routing I'm a big fan of um, actually because controversial, uh, but I'm I'm not a huge fan of uh, Next.js's file-based routing. In fact, it's one of my least favorite aspects of the framework. I find it really confusing to know where I'm at and what's going on. Um, whereas here, you can clearly see um, what what's going on and what relates to what. And if I want to quickly have a look at a particular page, then I can just jump across. So say I want to look at the file upload, I can just have a look here. Um, and that's actually something that's worth me saying is, of course, as I said, you think of this more as a framework. This is React code. So, you know, if you're a React developer, this will be very familiar to you. You can see all this as Tailwind um, as well. And like th th this kind of stuff, you're not going to have to learn anything crazy new. I think the process of learning WASP itself takes a couple of hours, which is, which is fantastic. Um, it's got much less of a learning curve than other frameworks out there. Uh, something also that's important to keep in mind is you can have author required. Uh, on the pages so someone will get bounced away uh, if they attempt to access that without being authorized so again one of these tasks that just takes a long time to get up and running by yourself and yet with wasp it comes out of the box like this so wasp has its own versions of uh, server actions as well which uh, they call wasp operations so um, you can see here that's a list of ways you can kind of interact uh, with the database uh, securely so um, you can see here it's the crud operations uh, around those demo apps and you would create your own custom ones. So for example, for me with Micro Influencer, that's stuff like adding new creators, setting up a conversation between a creator and a brand, adding a new brand, updating a brand's profile, mass uploading uh, unverified creators um, who I've discovered on TikTok who I think could be good potential partners for uh, brands to work with. So there's all kinds of uh, stuff you can do with actions here. And the other side of that is queries, which is, you know, when you're getting res uh, information back uh, from your database. So getting all the tasks that the user has listed uh, and things like that. You can see here that we specify the entities required. Again, as I said, this is just JavaScript. So if you're familiar with Prisma, uh, they're just JavaScript functions um, where you're calling, um, you're, you're calling your find menus or your, or your, find, uh, your, your finds, uh, etc. Or, you know, creating, updating, um, deleting. Uh, in the case of the actions. So you also as well are able to define um, API endpoints, which is super handy. Uh, the only one that comes out of the box here is this Stripe webhook. Um, and I personally find Stripe very confusing. Um, <laughs> so uh, that that's a really handy thing to have out of the box. It gives you an idea of kind of the right way of doing things. Finally, you have cron jobs. So I mentioned earlier, you get cron jobs uh, as code. So um, if you look in here, you can see uh, that this is how um, it, it is again just a JavaScript function um, and you can define kind of when they run so here that translates to 7 a.m. every Monday so this is kind of the whistle stop tour of wasp and I think you should see like how quick um, it is to get up and running uh, get up and running with this thing there's no special rules um, everything is just run through the central file and you're able to quickly get all these core functionalities usable uh, and it saves you that initial 50 hours and i just think the value that comes with that is insane and if you want to launch a SaaS quickly that's why i think wasp is the way if you've got any questions about this obviously let me know and have a word in the discord because they're a really friendly bunch so i don't really show my coding as much on this channel because i don't think i'm some kind of crazy 10x developer um, i just think i'm quite an entrepreneurial one and that's the kind of value i try and add and i think often that comes through from talking about code rather than actually writing it on camera uh, but if you do want to see me go a bit more in depth into wasp then i would love to do that and this could be a great way to start so um do obviously just let me know on that but this is a fantastic framework and i really highly recommend you check it out so i'm sure you want to go ahead and try wasp uh, i think it's fantastic the discord is really supportive the team are absolute rock stars but also as well really nice people 
And if you want to check out Micro Influencer, and if you're a brand that wants to work with niche, niche creators, you can sign up on the website. I'm always happy to have a conversation uh, around using the platform. Uh, I do also want to support creators in the near future, so do sign up there as well as a creator uh, if you want to kind of hear about developments down the line.